leadership. Thank God for Pastor George Fleetwood, Elder Bonaparte, Elder Jackson. Thank God for Minister Jawan, Minister Joshua, and Minister Arnisha Fleetwood, Minister Brad Bristow, Minister Avery Lagan, and Minister Sheree Eli. Minister Jennifer Singletary, we thank God for Deacon Lee, Deaconess Brenda and their recovery. We thank God for Sister Jackie Mason, Sister Jamika Hemingway, Brother Brandon Morrison, and we thank God for Sister Jasmine Morrison. Truly, it's a blessing to be here. Thank God for all the leadership. At this time, we're going to turn it over uh, to Pastor Joyce and Minister Josh, and I think during this COVID season, they have done an excellent job of ministering to us, and we thank God for them. Hallelujah to God. So let's get ready. Let's get ready. for Who's ready for praise and worship? Who's ready for the word of the Lord? Hallelujah. Let's get ready. Come on, give God a hand clap in your car. Hi, get excited in your car. This is the day the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hey, oh God, I pray. Don't start nothing out here. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to go into praise and worship. Pastor Joyce, if you would, come on. Come on, let's keep that excitement. How I many people are excited? We get to worship and praise our Lord and Savior on this evening. Come on, let's give us great praise. The name of the song says, oh, give thanks, we're thankful that we could be in our hospital beds, but we're all healthy. We're still right here. We're thankful that he's kept us healthy. Come on and give him praise if you know he's worthy. He's worthy of all the glory. He's worthy of all the honor. And we hope that you help us lift up the name of our Lord and Savior. We're going to sing this song. It says, oh, give thanks to the Lord. Powerful song. We sing it often, but it's a powerful song. Help us sing it. Come on, put your hands together and sing it with us.
Let's thank God for that selection from uh, Minister Josh and from Pastor Doris. We thank God for him. Because truly, truly the Lord is good and he is worthy uh, to be praised. Hallelujah to God. There's a couple of things that I want to share with you today. I want to do it not a brief review, not a really review, but I just want to kind of just bring out some of the things that we talked about last time and leading up to where we're going, uh, where we're going today. Oh God, I praise your name. Uh, everybody turn with me to, uh, let's go to, let's go to Matthew 6. Let's go to Matthew 6. So I'm not going to really go in on all of them. I'm just going to tell you about them. And well, let, let's go to Matthew 6. Let's get that out of the way first. And then we go to Luke 4. But let's go to Matthew 6. And then we'll go to Luke 4. And then we'll kind of get it rolling. Okay. Matthew 6. I want verse number uh, 13. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That's what I want. Now go to Luke 4. If you will go to Luke 4 and stay there. Stay right there at Luke 4. And what we what we talked about was the ways that the enemy, that he comes. We told us that he comes by way of murder. He wants to keep, commit murder, killings, unjustified murder, abortion. We talked about uh, sorcery, witchcraft. Uh, pharmacia. We talked about drugs and horoscope, magic and witchcraft and enchantments. And, and then we talked about coming through by way of mass media. We talked about uh, Pania. Uh, we talked about, I don't know if I got a chance to talk about it, but uh, he comes by, I don't think I got a chance to talk about music. That he comes also by way of music. And he also uh, comes because if you notice something, music, we got to keep it holy. Because if you're not careful, if you notice something, the, a lot of the words of, of music will incite you because you've got to understand Lucifer means light bearer. Mm -hmm. And you've got to understand that his very nature, he's a musical being. That's not even what I want to talk about. I'm just bringing that in. I didn't get a chance to really go in about it so I just want to kind of just talk about it just a little bit you know the Bible says that it's no marvel for Satan to transform himself into an angel of light so we've got that we've got to take we've got to make sure that we take music back make sure it's clean healthy and wholesome music and then we also we didn't talk about it but thievery you've got to realize being corrupt and bribery and uh the spirit of get over and uh, stealing on the job, uh, stealing from God, robbing from God. You won't pay your tithes. That's the spirit from the enemy. And then the last spirit that the enemy goes on the offense against us is through false doctrine. 
it is through false doctrine. I told you before, it's nothing for Satan to transform himself into the angel of light. Now the thing, and I, and I could have really just talked about that, uh, those subjects, I could have really hammered those subjects and that would have been it for us today. But I wanted to move on. And we talked about how do we come against the work of Satan? How do we come against the offense of Satan? We already talked about prayer. We already talked about communing with our brothers and sisters and getting our brothers and sisters to help us to pray because realize we're not in this by ourselves. But I want to talk tonight about God's word is a weapon for the believers. I believe it is Ephesians 6 and 17 says, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. We've got to make sure that we're going forth with the sword. The Bible said in Hebrews 4 and 12, For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, joint and marrow, and it is a discerner of thoughts and the intents of the heart. Psalms 149 and 6 said, Let the high praises of God be in their mouth, and a two-edged sword in their hand. God expects us to go forth with a two-edged sword. We've got to go forth and use the sword to our advantage. Second Corinthians 10 and 4 said, The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. One of those weapons is the word of God. You can't go to battle against the evil one or against Satan or you can't fight against evil without a sword. It is the only offensive weapon that we have. Roman soldiers would use the sword to seriously wound and kill the enemy in battle. We've got to learn to use the sword to defeat the enemy. We must be skillful when it comes to handling the word of the Lord. I think it was uh, Timothy told us to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly, rightly dividing the word of God. Because I'm going to tell you something that's going to mess you up. Believe it or not, and I'm going to show you that the devil also can quote the word. The devil also, not only can he quote it, he can misquote it, and he can give you his interpretation of it. And if you're not skillful in the word, or if you have not study to show yourself approve I'm telling you you won't know how to rightly divide the word of truth the word of truth must be rightly divided if we're going to use it as a weapon to go against the enemy I think the Bible said that my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge it is ignorance of the word that have caused the evil one to take many cats casualties in this battle we are losing the battle y'all because we're trying to fight with no sword we if we if we fail to properly use the sword you've got to understand that uh the bible contains the mind of god uh, the state of man and the way of salvation it tells us about the doom of sinners and the happiness of the believers it is time for us to get hooked in the book i think it was the bible said i think it was the saints of akia the bible said they have a addicted themselves uh, hallelujah to God to the work of the ministry and the spirit of I think the Bereans the Bible said they investigated or they searched the scriptures uh, to see if those things were so the things that Paul preached about they went and said let us do our own investigation let us do our own research let us do our own study and that is the spirit that God
God wants us to have. So when the enemy come, you can tell the enemy, no, sir. Hallelujah to God. I, I heard my pastor preach it, but I did my own research. I heard my pastor preach it, but I did my own studying. Hallelujah to God. We've got to learn to get off of Facebook. I'm not saying don't use Facebook to your advantage. I'm not saying don't use Facebook for a godly purpose or to op to in a way to encourage somebody or to lift somebody up or to promote God or to promote the work of God. But I'm telling you, we've got to still learn to get in the book of life. We've got to stir, still learn to spend time with God and not just studying, not just reading, but in meditation. What is meditation, Pastor? Meditation is when God is not through with you. You read it, but I'm not through with you. You read it, but I want to give you some gold. You read it, but I want to teach you some more and give you some more understanding concerning the word of the Lord. The Bible said, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. In the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seat, sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight, his delight, his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate, meditate day and night. We're losing the battle, y'all, because we read, but we don't meditate. What do you mean meditate, pastor? That's when you let it all sink in. When you meditate, hallelujah to God, that is when you take the word and you're able to hide it in your heart hallelujah hide it in my heart so what that i might not sin against god that i might not be overtaken by the evil one wow. yes sir hallelujah to god god teaches the word teaches us don't you walk in the counsel of the ungodly don't you stand in the way of sinners uh, don't you sit in the steep seat of the scornful uh, hallelujah i mean no i can't go where you go i can't do what you do uh hallelujah to god you know why because i'm trying to live a holy life i'm trying to live i'm i don't know about you but i'm serious about my walk with god you may be playing games but this ain't no game to me this thing is real yeah. Hallelujah to God. My walk with God is for real. My love for God is for real. Hallelujah to God. The things that I do when it comes to God, it is for real. Hallelujah to God. Come on here. How many of y'all know we got a lot of folks playing church? And they ain't even playing church. They just simply playing. My God. Hallelujah to God. I'm telling you, you just simply playing. How you ain't been to church in a year and you can't come to church? That tells me you have no desire, yes, hallelujah, yes. for what God has. You have no desire. Let me tell you something. Hallelujah that God, we should have been able to walk here. We should have been thumbing the ride if we had to. My God. Because you know why? I was glad when they said unto me, yes. let us go in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbors a downward spiral. Huh? When we walk in the council, we travel, we stand in their way, we maintain an upright position with no movement. Hallelujah. We sit with the scornful. It is not God's will for us to do these things. Huh? It is not God's will for us to be like the people of the world. And when you do exactly what the world do, huh? what's the difference? It's a shame when you go on folks' Facebook page, you can't tell who's saved and who ain't. Yeah. It's a shame you can't tell who love the Lord and who don't. My God. How many know we ought to see a difference in every area of our lives? Uh, hallelujah to God. This thing is bigger than our clothes. This thing is bigger than our hairdo. This thing is bigger. Hallelujah to God. We found out a long time ago it was bigger than who wear makeup and who ain't. It is bigger, hallelujah to God, than how oh God, what kind of clothes you got on. This thing is bigger than that. It goes back to commitment. It goes back to love for God. It goes back, come on here, to running after God. Let's go to Luke 4. This is what I want to get to. 
Everything I've said so far is just preliminary stuff. But this is where I want to get to. The Bible said Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan and led was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. I'm just going to get out of this what I want to get out of this, okay? Because there's a lot of stuff I'm going to pass over. And don't think I'm just passing over it. I just can't bring everything out, okay? Being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days he ate nothing. And when they were he ended, he afterward hung. Hungered. And the devil said unto them, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered, saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. So we see how he was led by the Spirit in the in the in the wilderness. And the, hallelujah to God. The Holy Ghost brought him to the wilderness to prepare him for the journey to come. Make sure you understand. We just read the other the other night. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are what? The sons of God. There will be times we will be led in the Spirit, hallowed for our time of testing, for our time of tribulation. We will be led by the Spirit. It's a good thing to go into testing, but I'm led by the Spirit. Hallelujah to God. Come on here. I'm not being led because of uh, my uh, inconsistencies. I'm not being led, Minister Brad, because of my disobedience. I'm not being led because of something that I brought on myself. But Brother Andrew, I'm being led by the Spirit. The test that I'm going through, come on here. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is watching over me as I take the test. Yes, sir. Come on here. How God, I praise you. And he brought him to prepare him for the journey to come. And the first temptation was his natural appetite and his natural desires. The enemy wanted to test his identity by trying to get him to operate in his divinity. He knew, hallelujah, that God, that this was the son of God. And he knew he had the power, come on here, to make the stones and the bread. Make sure y'all understand. Tell your neighbor, let, let's get one thing straight. These are real temptations. Do y'all understand that? These are real temptation. Let me tell you something. If I've been to BJ, if I've been to BJ Krusty Krab and I don't had two popo, two popo plates, hallelujah, brother Andrew, you bringing me a pizza is no temptation. Hallelujah to God. I look at the pizza and say, no, nah, I ain't want no pizza. You know why? Because I'm about to throw up from eating po' boy plates. I'm full off of the po' boy, po -boy plates. Hallelujah to God. So that's no temptation. But if you bring, I don't even eat crab. But you brought me a poor boy plate and I hadn't eaten 40 days. I'm going to bust in that crab. I'm going to bust in that shrimp. I'm going I'm to eat all the potatoes and I'm going to eat all the corn and I'm going to be sucking on the corn on the cob. How you know? Because it's a real temptation. You mean to tell me, Pastor, I want to think about me. I don't, like, I don't like chicken. I don't know what's wrong with me. If I like chicken, I don't like chicken. But if you ain't ate in 40 days, Hallelujah to God. You'll be sucking on the bone. So make sure you understand this was a real temptation. Jesus had not eaten in 40 days. Hallelujah to God. So his body was crying out for food. His body was crying out. Let me tell you something. The longest out going without food well, was about maybe three to four days. Hallelujah. Without food or with drink. Hallelujah. I was in the church. I think it was three or four days with my mother. I told her I was going to hang with for seven days hallelujah and i'm telling you after the second day i smelled macaroni and cheese and i smell pizza i smell everything i said my I smell food in here yes sir hallelujah minister brad i think uh, the third day brother minister brad you really gonna laugh about the third or the fourth day hallelujah to god i told my mom i can't make it hallelujah to god let me tell you what i did brother andrew i walked listen i walked I couldn't have been no more than 11 or 12 years old. I walked from the church, Olivet Good Shepherd Church. I, I think it was on 12th Ave. I walked from there all the way to Lafayette Street at Torpedo Base, got me a torpedo and a soda, and sat right outside on the stoop. Hallelujah to God and ate it all up. And then I walked all the way home to Pleasanger Place Projects. Hallelujah to God. Come on here. Yes, sir. So, and that was only three or four days. Come on here, y'all. Some of us can't, can't fast to six. Pastor, pastor call it fast to six. Twelve o'clock, Pastor Davey. Oh, 
Hey, hey, I tell you, we can never mind 40 days. We can't go 40 hours. So here he is. So tell your neighbor this was a real test. This was a real temptation. The temptation was real. The enemy was trying to get him to take matters in his own hand. Now, hallelujah. Seek to satisfy ourselves instead of God. To distrust the Father. Don't trust the Father. To supply your need. And to operate in your lust. Listen, y'all. I'm putting the mess you up. Tell me when you're ready to get messed up. When we get things before... God is willing to give them to us. We're operating in our lust. My God. That's deep, ain't it? It's not the time for you to get that house. It's not the time for you to get that brand new car. It's not the time. It is not your time. But yet you're going to get it anyway. Tell you, I don't know how I'm going to make these payments, but God going to make a way. You operated in lust. You driving a lust car. You living in a lust house. Man, that's deep, ain't it? I told y'all gonna mess you up. That's some deep stuff. Hallelujah. It ain't time for you to get married. You ain't got your stuff together. You ain't got your act together. You still, your eyes still roaming. You got married in lust. Mr. Brad, can I get a hand clap all day? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll tell you, neighbor, you're operating in lust. Holly, when we get things before God is willing to give them to us, God said it ain't the time yet. What is the rush? Not yet. But yet we go get it anyway. Tell you, neighbor, that's our lust. Yes, sir. We supposed to be fasting at 6 o'clock, and you got a ham sandwich in your hand at 12. Tell me, Pat, I didn't have to. It won't the time yet. It was the lust of your flesh. It was the hunger of your flesh. Yes, sir. Tell you about operating in lust. Now you want to know why you can't pay for it. Now you want to know why you're about to lose everything you got because you operated in lust. Yes, sir. You're trying to keep up with you lusting to keep up with somebody. You lusting trying to compete with somebody. You're lusting. See, we thought lust was just for another woman. We thought lust was looking at, oh, women, you, you, you ain't, you ain't, you ain't, you ain't innocent. Looking at another man. I wish my husband had muscles like that. You looking, you lusting too. It ain't just a man. Lust works through you too. But make sure you understand. Watch this, y'all. We need the word to overcome this. Job said, neither have I gone back from the commandments of his lips. I've esteemed the word of his mouth more than my necessary food. This is the place we got to get to when we esteem the word of God's mouth more than our necessary food. The enemy wanted him to operate in love. But watch this. The temptation was to fulfill the lust and the desire of the flesh. The temptation was to dis distrust God and do your own thing. And he wanted Christ. Y'all ready for this? Oh, you got to hold your seat on this one. He wanted Christ to be caught up and turning stones into bread. Hallelujah to God. Come on here. We've got to get us to command. He wanted him to command the stones to be made bread. So if Jesus, don't get me wrong, he would have got out of his divinity and he, he would have walked in his divinity and he could have made the stones to be made bread. But watch this, y'all. He would have, I heard the Holy Ghost said, he would have trusted in bread. All right, let me go. My life is tied up in God's ways and his ideas, not the lust and the desire for bread. What our problem is, we focus in on bread. All we're trying to do, hallelujah, is turn stones into bread. That's all we're doing. We're trying to start trying, trying to turn stones into bread. Anytime you get out of God's timing and get out of God's way and get out of doing things the way God told you to do it, you are caught up in turning stones into bread. Yes, son, that's where the enemy wants us because he wants us, watch this, y'all, to trust in bread. 
And that's why Jesus told him. Jesus said, no, 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 man. Hallelujah to God. I'm not trusting in bread. I said, would you want me to turn these stones into bread so I can trust in bread? Hallelujah. But Jesus said, no, no, no. It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word from the Lord. Hallelujah to God. He's telling him, you're not letting me live a life of bread. Live a life of turning stones into bread. And a lot of us that are parked here today, your whole life is about turning stones into bread. How do I turn stones into bread, Pastor? By doing it my way. How do I turn stones into bread, Pastor? Hallelujah to God. Oh, I want to accomplish something. I want to get well. I want to do, hallelujah. I want to fulfill my lust. I want to fulfill my appetite. Hallelujah to God. And all your life, you're trying to turn stone into bread. Everything in your life, it's about satisfying your flesh. It's about satisfying your feelings. You trying to turn stones into bread But Jesus told him Let me tell you something If I did turn the stones into bread I don't live by bread Hallelujah but I live by the word of the Lord Let me tell you something When you trying to un undercut somebody On the job to get the advancement You're turning stone into bread When you're trying When you're stealing and robbing from God You're turning stones into bread You're telling God My way is better than you way you'll take when you just a plain get over you just a get over you just a get over just a get over you get over on the job you get over on your bills you just a get over because your life is about turning stones into bread how what can i how can i manipulate my finances to feed my flesh to feed off of my lust My lust for food, my lust, hallelujah to God, come on here. I want to turn stone into bread. You either doing one or two things. You either turning stone into bread or you're living by the word of the Lord. You've got to examine your life. Which one am I doing? Am I so caught up? Am I so busy trying to turn stone into bread? Or am I caught up in living by the word of the Lord? I'll tell you, neighbor, you don't live by bread. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care what your status is. I don't care what your position is. You don't live by bread. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. God will bless us to get bread. It is God's will for us to get bread. But I got news for you. If I'm going to get bread, it's going to be through the word of God. It's not going to be through me turning stones into bread. Listen, Jesus no, watch this, y'all. It was not God's order to turn stone into bread. This is not God's order. Hallelujah. When we get out of God's order and we study stone and turn a stone into bread, it is then, it is then, Brother Andrew, it is then, Minister Sheree, it is then I understand the scriptures when it says you spend money for bread. Why do you spend money for that which don't even satisfy? Yes, sir, you got the bread. You turned the stone into bread, but you're not satisfied. You turn the bread. You spend all your life undercutting folks and dogging folks and kissing behind to get the promotion. You turn that, tell your neighbor, that's not God's way. And you turn stone into bread, but you're not satisfied. Yes, sir. I'll tell you, neighbor, you turn bread into stone. Turn bread into stone. I turn stone into bread. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Turn and tell you, neighbor, turn it. This is why we can't get no way in God. We're too busy turning stones. We're too busy trying to figure out how can I turn a stone? How can I get over? How can I deviate from God's will? How can I deviate from the way God said it? How can I turn a stone into a bread? Into bread? Into bread? But what we fail to realize, all that energy we put in turning stones into bread, we don't understand if we would have put that same energy, Minister Jennifer, into living by the word of the Lord. If we would take that stone, watch this, y'all. We would take all that energy into the word of God. 
God, watch this y'all, he will give us bread. The Bible says seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things, all the bread. Hallelujah to God will be at it. Tell your neighbor God has the bread. You don't have to turn stones into bread. That was good, wasn't it? Somebody give the Holy Ghost a hand clap. Yes, sir. Oh, God, I praise your name. Oh, God. Tell your neighbor, hold your seat. Yes, sir. Tell your neighbor, we're just beginning. Oh, God, I praise you. Oh, God. Tell your neighbor, come on here. Anybody understand now? Hey, neighbor, don't turn stone into bread. Don't spend all your time and all your resources turning stone into bread. Hallelujah to God. But you spend your time and your resources in the word of God and the bread will come. Yes, sir. Watch this. Look at verse number five. And then there's, there's a lot of stuff in here. I don't want to, I don't even want to get into that. And the devil taketh them up into a high mountain and showed him. So we do understand where Jesus Christ, even Jesus, hit to put the word on him. Y'all see that? Let's look at verse five. And the devil taking them up to a high mountain showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will give it. If thou will worship me all shall be thine. Man, I'm I'm finna, I'm finna mess you up. You may have to get out your car. Are y'all ready? All right, here we go. Hallelujah to God. Second temptation. It messes with his peace and his security. He testing God out. He, watch this y'all. Make sure y'all, let's set the story up. Tell you never, this is a real temptation. Yes, sir. Uh, he appeals to Jesus' emotion. Watch this, y'all. Um, uh, Brother Andrew, he's just a village carpenter. That's Jesus, you the one to fix my porch. He's just a village carpenter. You the one that fixed my baseboard. You are the one, hallelujah to God. Minister Brad, you are the one that put the two by four. You the one, that, ain't you the one that built my deck? He's just a village. He's not even a popular carpenter. He's a village carpenter. Ha! So here he is. Tell your neighbor, come on here. This is real ambition. And the devil appeals to him. And the devil tells him, look what I will give you, man. Hallelujah to God. I'll give you the kingdom of the world. And it's in a moment time. Listen, hallelujah. God, your father, has promised you some stuff at a later date. He has promised you some stuff at a later time. Hallelujah. He said, but listen, I give it to you right now. I give it to you at a moment's time. You don't have to wait on your God, but I can give it to you right now. He knew, in other words, I know for you to get, watch this y'all, for you to get what the Father has for you is a life of sacrifice. It is a life of self-denial. It is a life of surrender. It is a life of pain. It is a life of suffering. But I, Satan, has a shortcut for you. Tell me this ain't, a, this ain't no temptation. Man, this is a temptation. He's offering Christ. Hallelujah. But this is a pretty good offer here, too. He put up a good offer. Hallelujah to God. Come on here. I will give you this power and the glory of the air. Hallelujah. And I will give it to you in a moment's time. Hallelujah to God. Come on here. You don't have to go through what you got to go through. You ain't got to deal with the cross. You ain't got to go and hallelujah and, and, and go through living a living a, a sinful life. You ain't got to go through all that. Man, the Father has too many demands for you. The Father has too many requirements for you. Why would you wait, hallelujah to God, for what he has for you when I can give it to you now? Tell you, anybody been there before? Anybody been tempted like that before? God, huh? the devil said, I can give it to you now. But you know that's not what God has for you. You can take it now. Hallelujah to God. Come on here. I got it for you now. But tell your neighbor, it's better later. Yes, sir. Tell our God, I praise you. Tell your neighbor, you can take what the devil has now. Or you can wait to what God has later. And that's why I, that's why I understand when the Bible said, they that wait. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Woo! 
Why am I waiting for? Why does he emphasize waiting? Because I can take what the devil has now. I can grab what he has now. But you know what? I'm going to wait on the Lord. Tell your neighbors better later. Yeah, then now. Yes, sir. Hallelujah to God. I can get what I need now. Huh? But tell you, it was better later. Huh? Huh? I'll tell you, they were now and later. Come on, Pastor. Work. Oh, God, I praise you. Yes, sir. Does anybody been tempted like that? Yes, sir. That's the second temptation. Tell you, this is a real temptation. Make sure you understand, this is a village carpenter, and he's telling the village carpenter, I will give you the kingdom of the world. If you trade your ambition and your materialism, I give you notoriety, I give you fame. Hallelujah to God. Lord, help me here, Jesus. Lord, help me here, Jesus. I'm moving real good. Is that all right? Tell you, but now, later. Yes, sir. You've got to understand how he's telling Jesus you can get it now. I got everything for that you want in a moment of time. Hallelujah. He said, man, I give it to you. Hallelujah. Everybody understand all Jesus knew everything he had to go through. He knew everything that the father required of him. He knew the strict laws of holiness that the father had required of him. And the devil is giving him a free ride. The devil devil is telling him, hallelujah, all, watch this y'all, all these doors and, and all these uh, obstacle courses that the father have you going through, you don't have to go through all that, I'll give it to you at a moment of time, you ever have seen people say, why y'all gotta go to church so much, why y'all gotta pray so much, why y'all online so much? You don't understand. God has something for me later. Ah, serving God. There have been many times serving God. I look like a fool right now. Hallelujah to God. To people that didn't understand. I look like a fool. Let me tell you something. Serving God, you will look like a fool. They will say, you a fool for paying your money. You a fool for listening to that preacher. You a fool for going to church. You just a fool. But I just want to know, hallelujah, who's the fool later? Everybody talking junk later. They'll be talking junk later. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, you stole and you stealing money, you doing this. No, how come it just can't be? I waited till later. Yes, sir, David, you don't understand. Hallelujah to God. When I was craving for food, you don't understand. Hallelujah to God. When I was going to work with sleeve, with church, uh, Brother Andrew, I had shirts and up under my, right up under my elbow. Hallelujah to God. You could see through my elbow. You could see the brownness coming through the white shirt. Hallelujah to God. Come on here. Oh, God, I praise your name. Only a handful of pants to wear. Hallelujah to God. You don't know what I went through. Hallelujah to God Going to church with raggedy and beat up cars Going to church not knowing if I'd make it back Oh being my pastor coming to Darlington to preach And say baby I don't even know we're going to make it But we going in Jesus name Yes, sir. Hallelujah I remember one time I looked I said I guess we got enough gas to make it back Came to Darlington to preach because my pastor sent me here. Hallelujah to God. And I did not know if I had enough gas to make it home. So don't tell me I don't know. Pastor don't know what I'm going through. Yes, I do. I've been there. You just tell, oh, I got something. Tell you never, you just going through your now. You just got to survive the now. You've got to go through your now. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, ladies, coming. Yes, sir. Hallelujah to God. I went through the Lord and I went through the fire. But the Lord brought me uh, into a wealthy. <laughs> tell somebody, go through your now. Ladies, coming. Well, that ain't, that ain't even that ain't even what I had that's going to flow you. All right, here we go. All right, this is it. Hallelujah to God. Whoo. And he tells him, and I'm going to finish off with this. And he tells them, does everybody get the down and the later? Everybody get it? That this is, <laughs> Minister Avery, Minister Jawan, this is a real temptation. Minister Brad, this is something to give thought to. 
Brother Andrew, this is something that Jesus had to scratch his head. Listen, if it wasn't a temptation, we can't say he was tempted. If you want to fast, Brother Andrew, if you want to fast, and you're supposed to fast the six, okay? And you just happen to drop by somebody's house, and they got a fresh-made pizza, man. And it just looks right. The crust look right. Everything on it, all the toppings that you like is on it. And it's done right, man. I mean, you look and got that hard crust out up under, and that thing look good. And they say, and you're going to get your slice. That's temptation. Am I right? But Andrew, if you left the all-you-can-eat buffet and you don't eat all you can eat, that's not a temptation. Now, or you may say, wrap it up, I'll eat it later, man. But it's not a temptation. Do you see my point? So make sure you understand, this was a head scratcher. Jesus said, man, he was a human being. Do y'all understand he was human? It was a head scratch. He can give all this to me now. That's good. That's good, ain't it? He was a human being. Hallelujah. This is what he said. If you will worship me, all shall be done. All you got to do is worship me. All shall be be done. Oh God, I want to show y'all something. And I this is something that I imagined in my mind. Okay? This second temptation says if you give it up, you can have it all. The enemy wants to give him wealth, possessions, money, recognition, authority, glory, possessions. We live in a society that we will trample many to just advance. We sacrifice family, friends, honesty, morality, integrity. Yes. He's offering Jesus everything. But there's only one condition. You've got to worship me and all shall be done. I'm, I'm going to close with this, okay? That's all you got to do is worship me and all shall be done. Minister Juwan, I need you to come stand in front of me. That's all I need you to do. Back up. When well, you covering the camera up now, stand to the side. Go, go, go back over a little bit. There, right there. That's good. So, can I imagine this in my mind? Can I imagine it? Can y'all go with me? Okay. So he's appealing to his ambition. He said, I will give you all this, Brother Andrew, but you got to worship me. And all of this shall be thine. And to worship, he said, I will give you ambition, materialism, notoriety, fame. All I want you to do is serve me and worship me. That's all I want you to do. All I want you, can I, can I imagine in my mind, Brother Andrew, Minister Brad and Pastor George, can I minister in my mind? The devil, watch this, y'all. Ha, ha, ha. The devil is standing before Jesus and said, all you got to do is pay homage to me. All you got to do is fall down. This word here, worship, means to fall down and kiss the ground and pay homage to me. You see people go like that on the ground. Jesus said, if you do that, I give you all that right now. You can have it right now. Do you want to be betrayed and crucified and go through everything that you go through? All you got to do is bow down. Worship me. Come on in. Kiss the ground and pay me homage. And here is the devil standing before Jesus. He said, just bow down, kiss the ground and pay me homage. He's standing before Jesus. Y'all ready? Hold your seat. You know what Jesus tells him? I don't know what you're standing before me because I'm not bowing. You might as well get behind. You 
you are sitting here waiting for me to fall down and worship you, I got news for you. You might as well quit standing in front of me and get behind. Because it ain't going to happen. And I can see in my mind, Jesus does it about face. Turn the other way, son. Fall, fall to the ground. Yes, sir. He said, let me tell you something. How that thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and how him only shalt thou serve. I can see Jesus doing it about faith and said, I'm going to worship the Father. My God. Yeah. Thank you, son. Oh, God. Tell them, oh, he's waiting. He's waiting in front of you. And he wants you to bow down in front of him. He wants you to worship him. But you might well tell him, I don't know what you in front of me for. You might well get on behind. Because there will be nobody falling down worshiping you. Not today. He's in front of you. And he's expecting you to fall down and worship. But you must tell him, get thee behind me. I don't even like you standing in front of me. Give God praise for that. Oh God, I praise you. They never get thee behind me. For it is written, you shall worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Hallelujah. You've got to make sure that you're worshiping God and you're paying homage to God in the midst of the temptation. You worship God. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Hallelujah. I'm not giving up. Watch this, y'all. I'm not giving up my worship for a car. I'm not giving up my worship huh, for a new position. I'm not giving up my worship. I hope and pray something I said today. We bless you. We'll work on the third temptation later. But I, I didn't have time to work all of them out. But I hope and pray that something I said today, that you could take it with you and you could be encouraged by the word of the Lord. And you tell the devil, get thee behind me. You're not getting any worship out of me. Get thee behind me. Fall down and worship. Hold on, son. Fall down and worship me. Get thee behind me. Fall down. Come on. Get thee behind me. I'm not going to fall down and worship. Pastor, who will fall down and worship the devil? Hmm. You ready? You ready? I tell you what, David, they ain't go wrong. It's going wrong. Could go wrong. I tell you, I've been serving the Lord. It ain't nothing happening. And I tell you, I'm just tired. I'm just tired of all this. Coming to church and paying my time. I'm just tired. I tell you, you're falling down and worshiping and don't even know it. You falling down, worship it, and you don't even know it. Get the, the listen. Falling down and worshiping the devil is not mean you walking around in a red suit and you got dark black rooms in your house. No, 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 no. And you got satanic worship on. No, 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 no. When you go and you follow his plan and you listen to what he has to say and it becomes a priority in your life over God's word and you worship what he says over what God is saying, hallelujah, you're falling down in worship. You gotta tell him, get thee behind me. Don't pay him no homage. Man, I tell you, they were real busy. Mm. Tell him, get thee behind me. Oh God, I praise you. I hope and pray something I said that bless you today. We're done. We're done. Everybody bow your head. Father, we thank you for the word of the Lord. We thank you, God, to everyone that received the word. Father, let it be a blessing to them and let them go home another way.